Hey, what's up everyone? It's Snoo. Welcome to a crafting video. This is going to feature a couple of very specific rare pieces of gear that my current character is wearing. It is a Pathfinder Caustic Arrow Magic Finder. And many of you have been coming into my Twitch stream asking me uh, how I crafted these items. The amulet especially. So we're going to be looking at a quiver and an amulet. And if you're someone who's playing a dot multi chaos bow build character or some combination of those things you'll probably get a little bit of value out of this if you're someone who's not very familiar with poe tools for crafting i'm going to show you a few things on the back end it's definitely a kind of deep dive on crafting we're going to be using craft of exile today and if you're someone who is following my build specifically and you're on that trajectory to reach uh where i'm at in the build and you want to you know just follow along and craft your own item the crafts today are not terribly complicated and i it definitely quite fulfilling and rewarding to do your own crafts i highly recommend crafting your own items uh, for this build i think you can do it and it'll be really valuable for you since uh hopefully you can kind of follow along pause the video if you need to and uh, refer back there'll be timestamps there'll be links in the description like the profile page here the craft of exile website all that here but today we're going to be looking at this uh, penetrating arrow quiver which is basically an all-rounder standard double dot multi uh, quiver that is used quite often like every single league so this kind of quiver would be valuable basically any league and then the amulet is definitely a little more specialized it's my own thing it's it's a specific amulet i sought out uh, five or six modifiers that i specifically wanted i realized i could craft this very easily it's extremely good uh, if you wanted to use aspect of the spider if you're magic finding as well if you like having life and reduction of mana cost of skills if you like having plus one level of chaos skills it's a lot of very valuable mods surprisingly easy to craft so we're going to start with the amulet here since it's definitely the more interesting of the two and for this you know we got poe wiki i use this resource a lot this is poe db i got amulets pulled up here and then we got craft of exile which we're going to plug things in here so again timestamps down below and you can pause the video if you need to to follow along okay so let's start with the amulet um, i'm going to show you right off the bat there's, there's something very very important you realize that there are level requirements or item level requirements rather for s these items when you're crafting items you need to make sure you have a base that is the high enough item level in the case of the amulet we're going to be slamming uh two different influenced amulets together via awakened orb that's kind of an old style form of crafting that's not used that much since eldritch crafting became a thing but that's what we're going to do for the amulet and the shaper base needs to be item level 85 because that's what we have our increased items quantity of items found now if you if you're not magic finding you want to do something else maybe do chaos.multi on the uh hunter ethics over here you could find it over here and then it's just i suppose item level 80 that would be a good substitute if you're not magic finding anyway okay so let's pull it back up here we got shaper and you can see it says item level 85 for tier one quantity and the other uh ethics we're going to use is going to be for the redeemer side not hunter side that's right redeemer side it's going to be a mana reservation efficiency of skills now you may want to do specifically grace here because uh you, you can check in the pob if you're a little bit more advanced on understanding all this stuff you can check maybe grace is actually giving you even more reservation efficiency than generic i like doing generic it's just uh you know whenever i switch my build around what if i want to drop grace or something you know what i mean so i just kind of leave it on that but you can see the item level is just 75 very very easy to do so we need a 75 redeemer base amulet and since that is the least restricted we'll make that the one we slam into so i want a gold amulet in this case since i'm magic finding and then the shaper one it can be a random base but it needs to be a item level 85 and there are a lot of item level 85 random amulets shaper amulets anyway so both bases are quite cheap so the starting point of this amulet very inexpensive so in here i'm in the emulator and this is craft of exile.com i'm going to craft a new item it's going to be jewelry amulet and we'll do the uh, shaper one okay i think when i bought the bases it seemed like jade amulets were really popular i mean unpopular because they were very cheap <laughs> so i plug in shaper here item level 85 and what i'm going to have to do with this amulet is roll it now you don't have to use alchemy orbs and chaos orbs you can just alt spam it yes you can actually awaken orb Alt, uh, you can awaken orb two magic items so it's very easy to hit this you want to make sure you only have one influence modifier it's going to pick an influence modifier at random but if you only have one which you can kind of read into what awaken orb is that's what i have on the screen right here uh then you can do that so if it's your first time messing with awaken orb then look that up on poe wiki to see what it does and uh you know, can test it out they're much much cheaper than they used to be uh, a few years ago anyway 
So I got to go down here to the shaper mod and I'm going to be, you know, I'm basically just going to do this and I'm just going to alt spam it. It's going to take a while. Okay. It's not like trying to hit tailwind on boots back in the day, but it's pretty low waiting. And I'm going to save you time by just alt spamming until uh, I, or rather not alt spamming all the way until I hit this mod, but we're just going to plug it in manually because that's what the website's for. That's what the resource is for. So we can do it manually there. And so eventually I'll hit an outcome like this. The prefix is not influence modifier. So this is a great base and will work out well. Now, in order to copy this over to the next one, I have to do something really weird here. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where, oh, here it is. Okay, export, all right, generate export data. This is kind of annoying, but you have to actually, yes, copy that entire string, and we're gonna paste it to the second amulet, which we're now going to make. So the second amulet is going to be a gold amulet, gonna be a redeemer. There's gonna be tons of these. Item level 75, I mean, you'll probably get item level 80, 83, 85, whatever. Needs to be at least item level 75 and you would do the same thing by you know alt spamming whatever we're going to try to hit tier one reservation efficiency and of course i'm not actually going to hit it for you right here i'm just going to plug it in manually so i'm going to go down here to the suffixes find redeemer modifiers where is it here there it is okay now i plugged it in there now, whatever these rolls are here, this happens to be a perfect roll, and then this one is not, it doesn't matter. It's going to re-roll those numbers. But the amulet, the resulting amulet from the Awaken Orb, is going to have both reservation efficiency and quantity of items found, and they're both going to be tier 1, randomly rolled inside the tier 1 threshold, which is good. You know, might have to divine it later if you want, but anyway, we're going to plug this in. I'm going to now hit this, and I'm going to paste the data in. Do so I hit the Awaken Orb there? I pasted it in, and this is going to auto slam it into this amulet. So now, even though the shaper modifier requires item level 85, it doesn't matter. It's still slammed successfully into an item level 75. So it's a, it's a kind of workaround. Now, usually what happens, this is the hardest part of the craft, what I'm about to get to. Usually what happens is it will fill up the remaining suffix and give you one prefix. That's the most common outcome. It, you might get very lucky and get two prefixes and two suffixes. You might end up with three prefixes and two suffixes, or all six will fill up. But what usually will happen is it's going to close the suffixes, which means you're going to have to annul because as you saw you know, on my amulet, we had aspect of the spider on there, and that is a deterministic suffix that we're going to have to put on there. So this is the really painful part because it took a while to alteration span those things and get the awakened orbs and buy the bases and do that cheap, but time consuming. And I know some of you have suffered through that. So did I. <laughs> But that's what crafting is all about. So this is a one in three annul, okay? I have three suffixes here. I must take off attributes. Now, if you hit a terrific, if I hit like tier two, all attributes, I don't know, maybe I keep it. Maybe you keep it. If you hit tier one rarity, I don't know, maybe keep it. I wanted to have aspect of the spider on my build. There's not many places to put it. So I have it on here. So I do a an annul and, well, I actually hit the prefix. So I do it one more time. This is truly one in three. And I missed, okay? So that means I have to do this whole process over again. Because this amulet here, right here, is not worth anything. I mean, not even worth like eight chaos. You're not going to sell it. Throw it in the trash. Nobody wants it because you can't just magically reroll those <laughs> item, those uh, affixes back on there. Trust me, it's trash. You got to do it all over again. And unfortunately, it's time consuming. So for the sake of this video, I can just hit undo, thankfully. And I can try to one and three and null again. But I missed again. Now, on average, you'll do this successfully one in three times. So maybe this time I'll hit it. Nope, looks like I would uh, be re-rolling this amulet many times. Still miss. Cannot seem to get rid of all attributes. That's, I think, the fifth time. Okay, it took me six times. So that's uh, at least an hour down the drain <laughs> if I was making this amulet. But hey, it is what it is. Okay, it don't trust me. The longer, the longer it takes, the more rewarding it'll feel in the end when you succeed at it. And this is going to be a, an all tier one amulet anyway. So it's going to look nice. So now this could still have a random prefix. Let's say, for example, it just had a random prefix still on there. Uh, or, or heck, even two random prefixes. It could it could even have two random prefixes. It doesn't matter. So I could have two prefixes and two suffixes. That would be fine. We just need at least one open prefix so that I can uh, now do meta crafting. Now, this is where it starts to get actually expensive. Not time consuming, but quite expensive. So it's going to cost us two divines. 
uh, to do the next thing, which you might think would be put Aspect of the Spider on right now, but no, actually it's smarter, if you want to do the whole craft at once, to do this. So we're going to do, can have up to three crafted modifiers, I'll explain why in just a second, and then we go to prefixes, and then we do, suffixes cannot be changed, and this is going to protect an open suffix slot. Just so you're aware, it's not going to remove this, the uh, three craft modifiers bank craft when I reforge this. And what am I going to reforge to? Yep, you guessed it. We're going to reforge chaos. And if you go through here and you look at all the possibilities of prefixes, you see there's only one chaos mod. I can't even seem to find it. It's hiding from me, I guess. Oh, it's over here. There it is, right there. Extremely low weighting. You think it's almost impossible to hit this thing. But if I do reforge chaos, it's fine. There's no chaos mods in Redeemer's prefix. There's no chaos mods in Shaper prefix. So we're very lucky that our element, so to speak, is chaos. Which means this is a 100% success. Reforge chaos. The only bad thing that can happen right now is I fill up the whole prefixes. But usually, all it's going to do is take off suffixes cannot be changed. All the other prefixes and give me plus one chaos. Let's see if that's what happens. Okay, not exactly. A little bit unlucky here. It spawned with five mods, which would mean I would need to, uh, once again, do suffixes cannot be changed and try to annul that mod off. And then I missed here. Okay, I missed. Well, that's going to cost an extra two divines. That's okay. I still have the right benchcraft on here, right? So I can once again uh, go in and reforge chaos. Got a little unlucky again. We spawned five mods. This is pretty rare. Usually you're not going to spawn that many mods. But here we'll try it again. And that's unfortunate too. So you're getting to see uh, this is definitely very bad RNG on this particular showcase right now. Okay, there it hit. All right. Now, just for fun, I'm going to reforge uh, Chaos many times so you can just see how common it is that you end up with exactly what you want here. So you can see there, boom, it hit exactly there. I'm going to undo, do it again. Exactly there, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. I mean, this thing hits perfect almost every time, okay? It almost always hits just four modifiers. There was a bit of a fluke what I showed you a second ago. But anyway, usually four modifiers. It's going to be very clean here. So this is what we want to see. We still have can have up to three crafted modifiers. And the next thing is going to take advantage of the three crafted modifiers. But once again, crafting suffixes cannot be changed. And... Well, I guess in this case, we'd want to do mana, a junk roll mana. So in that case, I'm going to do max mana. I think it's like one augment orb. Now, why am I doing this? So I want to have an Ashling mod on here. So I'm going to do the Syndicate. And if I had put cra uh, Aspect of the Spider on there initially, this would be a 50-50, what I'm about to do. But because I crafted it this way, invested a little bit more currency... I'm going to have much better odds, repeatedly. Even if I keep failing, I'll repeatedly have two out of three odds rather than one out of two odds. So we're going to Ashling, and hopefully it removes either suffixes that cannot be changed or max mana. And I got unlucky again. This is a really, really bad RNG craft <laughs> this time. That's okay, because I still have the same mods I need, so I just basically... You know, I mean, I can unveil whatever. It doesn't It doesn't even matter, okay? And then we're going to, once again, we have to uh, reforge chaos. <laughs> we're back to reforging chaos. Boom, okay. Then we craft suffixes cannot be changed. And a mana. And try one more time. There we go. Okay. So it removed. Uh, suffixes cannot be changed. You could do this over and over again in the in the player here. I, I hit. Okay. Hit. Hit. Missed. Hit. Hit. I just needed to remove one of the two bench mods. Doesn't matter which one. Okay. Miss. 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 Three misses in a row. Four misses in a row. Really? Okay. Hit. All right. So again. Two out of three odds of success here. And now what I want to see is I want to see the plus one all chaos skill gems as a prefix plus max mana. The reason for plus max mana is because on the unveil side of the Isling here, there is a huge 
uh, roll potential for max mana, and we want to close that off. And this is virtually guaranteeing us uh, max life. And even if we somehow fail to hit max life, I mean, you would still get area of effect and area damage, which would be good. Or you could, you know, redo it again. Anyway. I can junk that tab. All right. And then we're going to unveil. And we hit max life. There it is. Okay. I had a very high chance of resulting in max life. And then we're going to put Aileron's modifier on here, which you'll need to unveil it at some point in the league. Non-channeling skills have minus max cost of mana. Oh, yeah. Before this, you have to actually go to the bench and manually bench remove the modifiers here, which I, in, in the application I have to do it this way. Okay, there's that's done. And now I just have my one open suffixes, which is going to be beast crafted straight on there. You need to probably purchase this beast off of trade. Assuming you're not beast crafting an aspect of the spider, it's good for chaos.multi builds. Uh, I think it is. And so I decided to put it in for my build. And it's done, except for catalysting, which you would then almost certainly want to do fertile because that's going to affect your mana roll, your, your mana over time roll, your life roll, and your mana reservation roll. And it's not actually going to be minus nine, it'll be minus eight. And then if you really want, which I did, I actually divined it to perfect. I wasn't necessarily going for perfect, but I was just going for higher rolls. And I would have certainly settled for this. This is perfect quant, perfect mana reservation, and okay, decent life roll. And this is a very, very good looking amulet now. Very good for a wide variety of builds. Oh, almost forgot. <laughs> I know somebody in the chat would have said something if I didn't do this. So, you know, we'll go ahead and I'll do this the hard way. Okay, there, now it's done. <laughs> Amulet finished. So that's how you make the amulet. Really cool amulet. If you can't use Aspect of the Spider in your build, which you might not be able to for a while, you have it on here. So when you do get to that point, you can use it. When you get your reservation efficiency figured out, get the levels and uh, or get the basic jewels with a few of them with mana reservation efficiency, what have you. It's done. It's ready to go. So yeah. Aspect of the Spider is optional though. Um, you could settle for whatever third suffix you spawn, I guess. On for the quiver, we're going to move to the quiver now. And just to remind everybody, this is the quiver we're going for, double dot multi quiver. We'll craft a new item, and if you were playing, if you were actually focusing on toxic rain as end game, you would want to do a different base than what I have. So we'll go quiver here. For toxic rain, you would pick bone broadhead quiver, and for caustic arrow penetrating quiver, uh, you want the extra pierce for toxic for caustic arrow, generally speaking. Uh, you will be able to see that uh, on trade here, which I have a few of these pulled up. These are the really popular ones here. I actually pulled up trade to kind of see what these were worth. These are always worth something in here. But anyway, go back here. It needs to be item level 86 this time. Yes, 86. I'm not going to pull up the PODB on this, but uh, the percent bow skill prefix damage goes all the way up to 86 to tier 1. So since we're going to craft this from scratch, uh, you should definitely get an 86 quiver hunter base no you need it to be not uh without the influence modifier now the reason you want this clean with no influence on it is because the easiest way to craft this is involves hunter exalt slamming the suffix and i'll explain that in uh just a moment here once we move forward in the craft so we're going to be clean here 86 proceed okay it's going to have uh I know we're just gonna you know do a usual thing and what we're going for on the alteration spam is tier one dot multi almost certainly not gonna hit this this is pretty hard to hit again not as hard as tailwind but pretty hard to hit so what i'm gonna do is put it on there manually and let's see where is it uh, here it is a lot of tiers, only a weighting of 300, not very good. Uh, and it, and you even need to have no prefix in this case. Or wait, no, I'm sorry, you can have a prefix. Any prefix is fine. Right, let me move to the back. Uh, what we're gonna do next is, yeah, we actually need the prefix because what we need to do is we need to get a second prefix on here. We're gonna regal slam this, and if it hits a suffix, that's no good. We need it to be prefix. So at a suffix, and that means you're gonna scour and re-alt spam. <laughs> You could annul and, and exalt slam, but I mean, that, that's going to risk another suffix anyway. So best thing probably to just straight up scour it and start over. So I hit this point again, regal, hit a suffix. Back again, hit a suffix. Eventually, 
I'm going to hit a prefix. Wow, that's some pretty bad luck. On second thought, you could beastcraft to uh, a suffix over to prefix. That's actually probably a lot better idea. Uh, I, I don't know why I didn't think of that. So that's what we'll do here. And maybe we'll get lucky. And yes, we did. Okay, good. <laughs> probably going to do that. So this is uh, Ferric Wolf Alpha. We could do If your regal uh, fails, you should probably uh, do this because that's going to save you a lot of time. Might even save you money, actually, because it's a lot of alteration. Orbs. So that's a good idea. And well, I didn't expect to actually be beast crafting on both of these items. But anyway, here we go. Now, this is a very clean quiver, perfectly ready for uh, priming up a double dot multi exalt slam. You need it to be clean. You do not want to have a random suffix in here because the way you finish the prefixes involves bench crafting, cannot roll attack modifiers. So that's why. Uh, having a quiver that's already messy and trying to reforge chaos in, into reforge chaos with prefixes or suffixes could not make change and then forcing a chaos roll into the suffix to pray for a double dot multi that way is a very messy way of trying to do this craft it's usually going to fail and actually it's not going to save you any money even with hunter exalt orbs costing almost two divines I think Hunter Exalt Orbs would have to cost over three Divines in order for that to really be uh, a sensible option because you would almost certainly have to annul one out of three to continue the craft that way. If it doesn't make sense what I'm talking about, just trust me, you're going to want a Hunter Exalt Slam, which means you're going to want to, again, trash a lot of these quivers until you hit what you want. Now the problem with... Here, I, I will actually pull this up here. Uh... We kind of need to see this here. So we'll go to Quivers and in P in POEDB. Modifiers, we go down to the Hunter Slam. So with the Hunter Slam options, you can see there's not that many waitings, but we only have uh, a total of a thousand waiting dedicated to Chaos.Multi. And it's a split 500-500 for high and low. Tier 1, Tier 2. I think it's like, a, yeah, something like a 1 in 4 chance of hitting Chaos.Multi somehow. And that's what we're going to try to do. So we need to close the prefixes because we don't want to accidentally slam a prefix in there. So it can be, well, obviously it would be a bench craft. So it would be crafted. And uh, it can be literally anything. Doesn't matter. Okay, so prefixes are closed. So our hunter exalt slam is guaranteed to give us a suffix. It's going to give us one of these suffixes at random. And the only thing we want here is chaos.multi because the fire and fizz.multi. I mean, you can check trade if you hit that. It's not really worth anything. So here we go. We hit and we attack. Set. Oops. Well, that was kind of dumb, wasn't it? I hit the wrong orb. That would be a Hunter Exalted orb. And we hit tier one fire dot multi. Now, I would probably check trade and see if the double tier one dot fire multi quiver is worth anything. For penetrating arrow quiver, probably not. But anyway, what I would probably end up doing is, well, I would attempt to trade to sell this for a couple of dozen chaos i guess and then start all over start all over again and get to the back to this point and yep purchase another hunter orb slam it in tier 2 chaos dot multi hey good enough for me that's good enough for me i would have been satisfied with it yes even with widow hail i mean except for super end game widow hail gameplay it's going to triple the modifiers of the quiver so it is really important to have a great quiver with a widow hail but you know let's settle for the sake of this demonstration we're going to settle it even rolled nice high rolls within their uh, roll range. So that's nice. So we're going to remove the bench craft here. And we're going to go down here. And like I mentioned earlier, can I roll attack modifiers? But actually we can't because we already have one attack modifier. So I'm glad this happens because this might trip people up. So we'll never get rid of this physical damage to attack mod. So we actually have to pay the extra two uh, divines to do a suffix. This cannot be changed. Sorry, that would be over here, wouldn't it? All the way down. Why am I on essence? Crafted, there we go. Suffixes cannot be changed. And scour. Okay. Now it's pretty. Obviously clean. Then, back here again. Cannot roll attack modifiers. And this is a sort of secret 
tech, there's not much of a secret anymore, but there are very few attack modifier prefixes. And here, if you check this, virtually every single one of these is attack. The only ones that aren't are increased damage with bow skills and maximum life, which very conveniently are the only two that add any real value to this build. So that is extremely nice. <laughs> And uh, that's all we're going to do is we're just going to answer. Oh, I almost forgot. It, we also add into the pool Hunter modifiers, for which there are two. A very low weighting or a low weighting projectiles pierce an additional target, which isn't that great. And then increased movement speed, which is actually pretty great uh, for a mapper like this. And, you know, we can just exalt slam. Okay, tier two movement speed. Not the great tier one life. And tier six bow skills. Now, I would probably feel pretty disappointed with tier six bow skills i was really hoped for a high tier bow skills one so i don't like that so that's not good enough for me what am i going to do i'm going to uh annul because i can annul this safely it cannot annul the attack modifiers even with even even annulling not just exalting but annulling cannot remove them uh, now it can remove the bench crap but hopefully not it removed my tier one life that's unfortunate and okay i'm back here so i can slam again Nope, I don't want tier 6, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Wow, I, I've been lucky it didn't pull my Divine Craft on here. Tier 1 life, tier 2 damage with bow skills. Please don't be Pierce. <laughs> I'd say Pierce. That's rough. <laughs> you. <can't... laughs> I guess we could have a 6 times Pierce quiver uh, with Widow Hill. Uh, but you know what? I mean, if this was in-game, you know, I probably wouldn't do that, so... I don't know. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I, I don't know. But I'm going to show you that it did indeed rip that off. So you'd have to spend a divine to put that back on. And then I ripped that off and then pray for a top tier uh, life roll. Oops, didn't hit. You know, And you can see this can start to get pretty messy pretty fast. Okay. So you can be kind of banging your head against the wall. But it's really not that expensive. Normally you would not have to spend much more than say uh, 30 divines on this craft. And this is by far the most expensive and most important item for the build. So you don't have to feel too bad about trying to get it real nice. I, I might be shooting a little bit too high here. Getting tier 6. Tier 1 movement speed, tier 2 damage, tier 10 life. Oh, wow. Can't do it. Boom. Okay. Done. All right, I would have, I would be fairly happy with this quiver. Now, the I don't like three percent movement speed, so I probably divine it, maybe a little bit. Uh, I don't know, something like that. I don't know how many divines you would spend on this, uh, but you know, you can you obviously pay attention to the dot multi rolls, and you would probably want the movement speed roll to be pretty good. Doesn't seem to be behaving very well for me here yeah this is fine okay this this hit pretty good so this was a, a very bad rng craft i think for uh the quiver and i probably spent i spent at least 30 divines i think trying to make this quiver just now for you but anyway that is how to make the quiver and if you want to see what some of the quivers look like over here you can go all the way down here and kind of see what they look like uh you can of course just purchase one that's either half done or all the way done and i even have a nice string here where i'm counting on either getting for toxic rain or caustic arrow one of the right implicits and then it has both uh, double dot multis at least tier two for each it has an empty suffix or crafted suffix an empty prefix or crafted prefix and this would guarantee me one that's at least halfway done this is not a bad idea you can purchase the quiver in a sort of halfway done state and uh you know you might want to think about doing this you get tier one tier two you could kind of just pick and choose which one you want if you don't want to bang your head against the wall trying to alteration spam in the beginning and just kind of fast forward to the part that's expensive but quick and easy anyway uh, so that's it and i just want to say i for some reason this little guy here was only six divines i went ahead and purchased that one i already bought that one i'm going to profit craft it because i don't know why it's only six divines <laughs> it's a uh, double tier two but uh i'm sure that uh I just used up all my bad RNG right now on the Craft of Exile, so I'm definitely going to just triple Exalt Slam Tier 1. No question about it. Actually, there is a question about it because uh, it's only item level 85, so I can't actually triple Exalt all Tier 1. But anyway, 
that's going to be it for this video. I hope it was really valuable for you on the crafting side of things. Um, for this particular build, the quiver is extremely important to have a, a nice quiver because you're tripling the modifiers of each roll. You really don't want to settle for something much worse than this. This is good enough. I wouldn't be happy with tier 2 movement speed, really, but it's, it's fine. It's really not bad. Uh, you can go for one a little bit better, like what mine is now. And if you uh, search this on your own now, after this updates again, you're going to see that the numbers on this quiver, my quiver, got improved just a little bit over time. I'm not going to tell you what happened, but uh, you can go look me up again on the profile and you'll see that uh, my quiver got even a little bit better than this. So that's pretty fun. I had to spend a little bit of money, but that's all right. So my build is basically done now, and I plan to come out with a video uh, showcasing this build in its final form. Doing the mapping thing, explaining the build, the gems, all that stuff. But anyway, hopefully this was helpful for you if you're crafting for this build or a build very much like it. Let me know uh, how it goes for you. <laughs> Go ahead and give me your sob story. Your sob story in the trade. Or the, uh, the comments down below, I guess. Because I know a lot of people have one. <laughs> but anyway, that's it for now. I'm out. I will see you guys live on Twitch again tonight, I guess. Or tomorrow. Alright, bye-bye.